Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, we're gonna address the ignition system for the flathead. We're gonna adapt and rebuild the distributor. Now, when you start venturing into the world of Ford flatheads, you start to notice some idiosyncrasies between the years. Uh, on the table here, we have two timing covers spanning the life of the Ford flathead from 1932 to 1948. The distributor from 1932 to 41 was called the three bolt helmet style distributor. I don't have one on hand, so here's an image. Uh, it was a large aluminum casting. Uh, the coil was integrated into the casting, which was kind of interesting. And the cap was split into two halves. You had four terminals on one side, four terminals on the other. Now after 1941, the 1942 flathead received the two bolt crab style distributor, which is what we're converting R39 flathead to. Now this distributor in particular is a little bit later based on this um, cap uh, retaining system. This is what's called a bale. Um, this was a little bit later of a distributor that the same workings, the same casting, just the cap was a little bit different. It had better weather protection uh, for the wires heading to the spark plugs. Uh, but we're going to convert this casting over to the 1942 to 45 crab style distributor. Um, ultimately, for me, it's just a fact of easier obtainable parts. You can get the cap and rotor at your typical supplier. Now, if you'll notice, both timing covers are extremely close in terms of overall shape. That being said, if you want to convert a 3241 flathead to use a 4248, crab style or the larger cap style distributor, you can certainly just transfer over to the other timing cover. The only caveat being is that the snout for the camshaft is farther out towards the timing cover on the 3241 as opposed to the 4248. If you go to put the distributor, the two bolt distributor onto this timing cover attached to an earlier flathead, you'll notice that there'll be about a quarter, uh, three eighths gap in between the surface here and the mounting surface of the distributor. So you're gonna have to find yourself a adapter to take up that slack. These are readily available from your part suppliers. It's a nice fitment. You get two new gaskets with the part and it makes the adaptation very easy. Now, for the sake of conversation, the last rendition of distributors for the Ford Flathead was the APA design. This was from 1949 to 53. This design kind of paved the way for decades to come. Of course, as you can notice, it's a lot more modernized. This uh, distributor's seen better days, but this one heads straight in from the top corner, engages the cam off of a uh, drive, uh, you can adapt later 24 stud flatheads to this as well with a little bit of work. But for now, we're going to focus on adapting and rebuilding the crab style for the 39221. So the first step is going to be to take the bail wire off since we're going to be converting the cap and take the contact plate out. Now there's a retaining clip that covers about three quarters of this contact plate. Let's carefully remove that without having it travel across the shop floor. Next step is to remove your timing advance index. That's gonna help you set initial timing and timing on the car. Now we just got to carefully pry it out. Not usually the easiest task. There you have it. So your breaker plate is where your points are mounted. 
and where your primary wire comes into contact with the plate. Underneath that is your cam that operates your points. And as I pull the rest of the shaft out, you can see these spring-loaded weights that operate your centrifugal advance. Now, if you'll notice, there's a plate in between your weights and your cam, which comes into contact with this plunger off to the side. What this plunger is, is a timing advance vacuum brake. Now, traditionally, it was common in the 1930s and 40s for you to be running somewhere along the lines of 70 octane fuel, uh, which is relatively low to today's standards, which is uh, why today's cars traditionally require a lot more advance. In a scenario where you have such a low octane, the odds of the centrifugal advance going too far were pretty high, causing a ping or a knock. So they designed this vacuum brake that runs off manifold vacuum to slow down the advance, preventing the knock. At high vacuum scenarios, the vacuum would overtake the spring and pull the plunger back. And then once that vacuum drops to zero, the spring overcomes the vacuum and holds back that advance. Now, that being said, gasoline is a lot better, at least in terms of octane nowadays. So a lot of people tend to delete these entirely, which you certainly could do. You can plug your port, take this uh, barrel out, take the spring out, take the disc out, and just run it kind of bare bones. People seem to have good luck with that. I haven't really experimented with it, but who knows, maybe we'll give it a shot. Now, sometimes these springs have a tendency to be pretty weak, whether somebody kind of tweaked them or just by age, but I think these will be okay. Now, the points come out fairly easy. They ride on these posts and the entire points assembly is controlled by this saddle here uh, and they're attached to the primary by this post here. Um, typically they have cotter pins in line uh, on the post side and then they have these copper washers. Now these washers usually don't come with a set of new points so if you have them make sure you don't lose them. What I do is I hold that metal back, undo the screw, kind of release it gently. There you go. Now at this point, one thing you should be aware of is the contact for the points is this copper strip to this point that contacts your primary wire. If you notice, it's a pretty janky setup here, and a lot of times these will be cracked. Hey, there you go. Crack right there. Now, unfortunately, that's an integrated part with the contact plate, so in this circumstance, I have another contact plate that'll work, but if this was my one and only, I'd have to replace the whole thing. Try not to pry too much because these have a tendency to bend real easy. I'm going to clean the majority of this with a little bit of kerosene. Uh, kerosene's great because it tends to cut through a lot of your dirt, grime, and sludge. Uh, the only caveat being it's a little messy, it's smelly, it's you know kind of a mm, janky situation if you got an open flame someplace, but I think we'll be okay. And then we'll follow through with some nice warm water and dish soap.
All right, now that we're all cleaned up, it's time to go back together again. Uh, while we were cleaning up, we went ahead and converted the bale style uh, distributor cap clip to the more modernized clips for the crab style distributor cap. Now in this section of the distributor, this is the side that engages the cam. This is where your uh, advanced weights ride. And this is where the contact uh, plate rides through. If you'll notice on the bottom of the housing, there's a oil light bushing as well as on the top. And in the center of this shaft, there's actually a wick that runs from the bottom to that hole up top. And uh, there's engine oil that's going to be lubricating um, this contact area. As you can see, there's a groove. Um, so oil is supposed to lubricate the oil light bushing on the bottom and then work its way through the wick and lubricate the top. Uh, but for now, as we're assembling, we're going to use some number two distributor grease. It's also good to check these bearings here. All right, let's throw the advanced weights in. Now from here, we're gonna roughly set up our new points onto our breaker plate. All I like to do is just kinda get them started while it's out of the distributor. It's a little easier to get to. All right, from here, I like to use exclusively dielectric grease. So, throw some of that on the posts for the points. And also the area where the points contact the cam. Now the copper contact goes in between the point saddle and the primary contact. Next up is those little washers, throw them on top and then cotter pin through. All right, points are pretty much ready to go. Keep everything loose for when it's time to set the gap. Just throw a little bit on the contact area for the primary. And throw a little bit of grease on the post or a little bit of 30 weight oil will work just fine. From here, we'll throw our advance and retard index with the lines facing down. Kind 
gonna loosely set our primary. Now, before we throw that in there, uh, wouldn't hurt to throw a little contact grease on it, but also check the spring on the primary. If it's a little loose, you may have to replace it, or if the contact is just too worn out. Next is your advanced brake. Drum first, then spring, and cap. And we just loosely throw this on because we're gonna have to adjust that on the car. Last but not least is the C retaining clip. You'll notice there's a tang on the left-hand side close to your primary. That's where you should start your clip. Try not to shoot it across the floor. Check that it's in the groove. I think we're good to go. This is where we're gonna set our initial advance and then of course our tuning once it's uh, installed in the car. But you'll notice the body static and the plate itself is what turns to set your advance. It's not a whole lot of movement, but better than nothing. All right, so that's pretty much it in terms of the rebuild. Uh, the next steps are to set the point gap and the initial advance. We're going to save that for the next video. So until next time, thanks for watching.